You're listening to the Elder Llama Podcast, the show that inspires curious minds to ponder the secrets of the universe. My name is Erica Mezqua. I'm a UCLA undergrad STEM major, and in this podcast, I combine my knowledge of astrophysics, evolutionary biology, and the nature of the human mind to make cohesive observations about the world. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. I hope you're doing as well as can be expected, given these strange, strange times. We have a global pandemic that we're dealing with. We have civil unrest in the United States. And of course, the impending feeling of doom and existential dread that comes with simply being a human. But all that aside, I hope you're doing fantastic. Now, in this episode of the podcast, I'm going to get into what people mean when they say we are one. You hear it in climate change ads, we are one. You see it on artsy graffiti on the sidewalk, we are one. But what does it actually mean? And is there any truth behind it? From the get-go, it sounds like this woo-woo spiritual stuff, right? But it's actually really awesome if you understand it from a more scientific way. And my goal is to express that to you here in this podcast. So within the next maybe 10 minutes, Max, uh, I hope that you will have a greater appreciation for that statement. We are one. And maybe it will change the way that you interact with life, the people in it, the people around you, your loved ones. When you realize that, wow, we are in fact this one thing experiencing everything in the universe, every single piece of matter, Every jewel of energy was once one thing, one infinitely small thing. 13.8 billion years ago, this thing exploded with the magnitude of all of the energy in the universe. You think, oh, this TNT is powerful. You think, oh, this volcanic explosion is powerful. But can you even fathom all of the energy in the universe to explode in one instant. In the beginning, the universe was going, moving too fast and was simply too hot for anything to exist, for even atoms to exist. It wasn't until about 380,000 years after the Big Bang that everything cooled enough and slowed down enough for atoms to latch onto each other and to actually become atoms. But at first, of course, all we had was hydrogen. There was no other uh, uh, elements that we see today like helium, oxygen, carbon, none of that existed. Millennia more passed, and eventually the universe cooled enough such that we had these massive conglomerations of matter sprout up in the universe. That is stars, right? And in these stars, there is so much heat and pressure that hydrogen atoms literally fused together to form helium and carbon and oxygen and all the elements that we see today. It was in those hearts of stars where all of the elements necessary for life came to be. They didn't exist in the beginning. It was only hydrogen. Okay, that was the the, the first big part of it, of, of this, this overarching story. That is, the universe exploded in the Big Bang. It expanded, cooled enough, made atoms and stars. And in these hearts of these stars, more elements were made. Now we get into how life came to be in the universe. So the earth is about 5 billion years old, right? So 5 billion years ago, this thing was just a volcanic explosion, fiery mass of chaos, but it had everything you need for life. It had the the three fundamental ingredients, liquid water, elements, and of course, energy. In this liquid water, these elements mingled together and with the help of energy came to be life. Through some mechanism that we do not yet understand, organic molecules became full-fledged life. Prokaryotes, archaea, the most fundamental primitive life forms on Earth. Eventually, these things evolved into eukaryotes and multicellular organisms and social beings like bees and ants, eventually primates, and now us. So what we had was this dead rock in the beginning, a ball of elements that was lifeless. And eventually... This rock sprouted arms and eyes and plants and animals and apes and you, humans. When you think of like, what is the universe? Quite literally, 
it is these elements that have come to life and now are looking in on itself. Much in the same way that a tree sprouts from the earth. And that is what people mean when they say we are one. You are the universe experiencing itself. This rock came to life and is now considering itself. You're pondering yourself. And when you realize that, there's a sense of unity that comes with it and a sense of peace. So that's pretty cool, I guess, that you're one with the universe. As the great Alan Watts once said, you are it. Whoever you are, wherever you are, I feel you. I hope you have an awesome life. And if you enjoyed this, start a discussion in the comments. Give it a like. Share it with your philosophical friend. Cheers, mates. <laughs>